you know, one thing we're interested in this show is like the formative experiences that are heartbreak, you know, and anxiety. Mm -hmm. That really does shape so much of how you see the world, you know, these first loves, or even if they're small and fleeting and kind of stupid in recollection, mm -hmm. like, you know, they actually are a big thing when they're happening. Absolutely. In that environment, it sounds to me like there's already a lot of anxiety. Mm -hmm. There's already a lot of pressure. Oh, my God. Is there, you know, high school and, and middle school are these, like, grounds for kids kind of, like, with all their hormones and pheromones and all the other moans they're just like they're just they're just, they're just, they're just, they're just, they're just that's they're clever ju you know what i mean they're just mm -hmm. like that's cranked up so where so how is that expressing itself maybe, maybe around you or for you because you you were also a bit younger which by the way when mm -hmm. i background on me anybody who listens knows I, I i didn't even complete middle school because i was uh i came i moved to la and i started working in television and film. So I didn't even really go to high school, but I had a little snippet of it. And Whoa. and I, so I was younger. So I was younger. I was about 13 for like four weeks in high school. And the prospect of wow, all these kids were like learning to drive and they were asking each other out to, uh, I guess, prom, prom or homecoming. Yeah. I mean, maybe homecoming because prom is for older mm -hmm. kids, right? Uh, the Sadie yeah. Hop? Is that what that, that Homecoming probably. Sadie Hopkins? No, no, this wasn't 1940. <laughs> it was actually uh, it was, it was 2003, <laughs> Nava. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or 2002, 2001. Um, That's funny. Uh, so, yeah, so tell us a little bit about, like, <laughs> if you feel comfortable sharing your first first heartbreak or one of those kind of formative, like... Yeah, first love, first you know, heartbreak. You know? Oh, man. Yeah, yeah I will. You don't have to name names. <laughs> no, I definitely won't do that. Um, <laughs> it's funny because I am... I'm a lover. Like, oh. I am a romantic at its best and worst, mm. I think. I am hopeful as much as I'm hopeless at it, you know? And it's funny for you to ask me that because after, like, just my journey of love and my different relationships that I've been a part of, I haven't really thought about the first time mm. in a long time. And so my first heartbreak was because I broke her heart. Mm -hmm. mm. That was my first time where I felt incredibly sad in love. Mm -hmm. And mm. it didn't come. it came from my 15 year old mistake mm -hmm. you know and so i was in of i was in my i guess my first serious relationship and we were together for most of my sophomore year and i yeah i cheated mm -hmm. and i got with another girl from another like department dance major mm -hmm. <laughs> and and i guess experiencing this whole because i was that's always been my problem is that i I'm just like every other guy where I, you know, I, I have these feelings and these hormones and, I'm, and I want to chase them, but I am a lover and I like relationships. And so what I'm, I'm a lot better, by the way, these days, okay? This <laughs> isn't still, this no, isn't still going on. Yeah. This isn't, let me look at the camera. This isn't still going on. <laughs> and so, um, um, and so... Yeah, I think I think just going through that's always been my my downfall is that is that I, I I don't think I've ever been ready for any relationship I've gone into, but I've mm. dove into them. Mm -hmm. And the first time I did it was in high school, was when I was 15. And um yeah. Did that stay with you like a, you know, after you broke her heart, mm -hmm. what were sort of the what was the ripple? after that yeah it stayed with me i mean it's just this i've realized that i'm not this like i, I can't just make a mistake and be like oh, what made a mistake moving on like mm -hmm. i make a mistake and it kills me mm -hmm. and it like eats me up so much and so i told her that i did it like i went up to her in tears mm -hmm. like i i did this and um yeah i just it's just causing my own trauma is exhausting. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of what I'm doing. It's creating my own mess and creating my own sense of trauma. Because now, to me, that's, that's a traumatic experience. It's, mm. it's, yeah. it's having to have dealt with hurting somebody deeply and, and trying to make amends or, or just putting it in a box and being like, damn, I messed that up, moving on. Mm. It's, my, it's a sense of trauma for me as opposed to the opposite where maybe there's a girl who went up to me, uh, cheated on me or a girl who was, like, treating me badly. I've never experienced that. I've experienced a lot of love, and I've experienced a lot of honest, genuine love, um, and I have messed it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have messed it up multiple times, 
And so I'm at a point in my life currently where I'm trying to really not end up in that position anymore. Mm -hmm. And that is spending serious time to myself. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I was going to ask, what what do you think the steps to that are? It starts with that. It starts with finding peace being alone because the lover in me, I'm a Libra. Okay, I'm I'm uh, I'm, a, I'm a Libra. I'm Dominican. All right, there's you know how many problems I'm mentioning right now, and I'm you know these are these are issues. These are serious issues, and so I have to be I have to I have to be aware. One thing I've learned in the past year of being just kind of to myself is I yearn for validation. Like I'm just looking for that, and it's not from my Instagram or from comments or from. Of strangers in the street it's from a woman it's from one yeah. woman i just mm. it's easier for me to go through my days being validated and being told that i'm just that guy by mm-hmm. this one person i realized that that's cool but it's 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 my most toxic trait mm. it's my mm-hmm. biggest problem because it's what's led me into quickly getting into relationships mm-hmm. staying in a relationship for the sake of safety mm. and then still having the other half of me that wasn't ready so he's panicking and he wants and to he go yeah. wants to figure out it's not even that he wants to go off sure, and do sure, things yeah. you know Sorry for that. No, no, no. No, 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 you know, it's 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 not. I want to be with somebody else. I think it's like it's a response in in, mm. in all these other ways. It's like it's the, d- the emotions you just described. Yeah. You know, and so then the way that it yeah. manifests is like, well, this is maybe like a quick fix. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, that's my that's one theory. That's I think theory. that's valid. I think that's valid. I think just regardless of what it is, though, yeah. the other yeah. person's always gonna lose. Right. Yeah. And it's never gonna. And you're mm-hmm. always gonna deal with that. Mm-hmm. And if you're cool with dealing with it, that's you. <laughs> like yeah. if you're cool with just doing it and being like, wow, she's pissed. But I can't, and it kills me. Mm-hmm. And the people who I, you know, the the like the, the experiences I've had, if the person was right here right now, that they can at least say, yeah, like mm. it definitely hurt you too. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't like you spent the time ignoring me. Like you, I've always spent the time trying to f- right my wrongs, mm-hmm. and it comes from me wanting to. Mm-hmm. But it's just all like, so exhausting. Yeah. It's it's so exhausting. It's wonderful, though, that you recognize that, sort of that you have that, like, awareness and, and you have an awareness of, like, what you're striving towards in love. That's, yeah. that's all you can do, Drew. It's new. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, I think it's... anytime one person hurts another, it hurts them, too, yeah. mm-hmm. whether Definitely. they admit it or not. And I think admitting it and dealing with how it has hurt you, too, and how it's affecting you is, is that first step. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You talked a little bit about religion. You said that you grew up Catholic. Yeah. And I'm wondering uh, if you could tell us a little bit more about the role that religion and spirituality played in your life growing up. And then mm-hmm. also, what are your views now? How do you feel towards spirituality and religion? So I grew up Catholic, um, and I grew up believing in God. I still fully, do, as well, I believe in God. I believe that there is something yeah. beyond. I, 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 I don't know, you know, and I don't... Mm-hmm kind of kill my brain trying to figure it out often um but I, I lost my grandfather when I was 17 I lost my grandfather two months before I got the moonlight row mm. exactly two months wow. before the same grandfather who I grew up in the house yeah. with my whole life um I lost him to cancer he was only 65 mm. so it was unexpected it was scary um but the second he went up I started always calling it up and, and I started remembering the values I learned as a child. Mm-hmm. I, I've dissected myself from Roman Catholicism. Uh, I believe in a lot of things, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but I don't know. I don't even know much about it, to be honest. I went to Catholic school, but I, you know, I don't know much <laughs> about the politics of religion. Sure. And so yeah. when it comes to the politics of religion, I'm out of the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when it comes to personally believing that my grandfather is puppeteering me right mm-hmm. now and helping me through my career, yes. Mm. There's no way he went up and two months later I got this role 
and yeah. these blessings. Oh, and yeah. I think his power down here, he had such power down here. He was mm. such a light. Like he was, he'd come up to you and be like, You are so beautiful. <laughs> oh my God, give me a hug. Give me a hug. And he didn't have to. And he just, mm. he was always trying to, mm. he was always talking about me. He was always like, That's my grandson. My grandson, he's going to be in mm. movies. He's going to be in movies. Wow. Cause he got to see me through my four years of high school. Mm -hmm. So he got to see me build love for mm -hmm. the craft. He came to my shows. The last musical he saw me in was me playing Uznavi in the Heights on wow. in, in LaGuardia. Yeah. Yeah. And um, at the time, he was very sick, so him coming was huge. Wow. And we had to like go right back home. Like after, mm -hmm. my, after we graduated, all my friends went out to dinners and parties, and I went to the hospital, mm -hmm. and I just kicked it with my grandpa. And so I was losing him wow. at a really weird time, at a very crazy time in my life on top of getting a manager who's like, hey, audition for stuff. Yeah. Um, I lost him August 25th, 2015. That beach scene in Moonlight, that like really iconic one, mm. I shot October 25th, 2015. Mm -hmm. So it's like literally two right. months on yeah. the day. Um, so that's all to say, I believe he's up there. I believe that the things I do down here uh, matter and will yeah. carry on to wherever I go after. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the nitty gritty of it all, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's hard to say. It's that's hard to really say. It's really beautiful. Yeah. That is beautiful. Yeah. So, Drill, I lost my mom August 1st, 2014. Mm. And I would just offer this as like just my own sort of, I've thought about death a lot. Um, I do think that they're involved, that sort of our loved ones are involved in our lives and help us cultivate our talents here. But I think we can also help them there mm. and that we can like continue to cultivate that relationship with them. Uh, so maybe like meditating ways to continue to cultivate your relationship with your grandfather. I when I that. sort of had that epiphany, it really yeah. changed my relationship with my mom's death and, and allowed us to have a relationship still. Mm. I speak to him all the time. I spoke yeah, to him in the beautiful. bathroom before there's any. Yeah, I mm. speak to him all the time. So that's, that's that. really nice that you that you do that as well. Yeah. But yeah, so when it comes to that, that's my mm. answer. Yeah, yeah. That. yeah that's yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. We want to get into your career, which is already so incredible, but I want to ask you one, one more personal question. Mm -hmm. You shared, I'm very family-oriented, and I had only a few solid friends growing up. I went from that to suddenly having people from all walks of life want to be my friend and concern themselves with my welfare. Wow. And I wanted to ask you, what has that transition been like from the Bronx to Hollywood? How's that been? It sounds like it'd be very intense. Yeah, still going through it. Yeah, still, <clears throat> still going through it. I'm just such an oddball. I'm such a like weirdo when it comes to it. I don't, I didn't run to it. So I got lucky. I, I don't know why I didn't run to it, but I chose not to. What I mean by that is like, when when they see us came out, and I won the Emmy. Yeah, I just watched your speech the other day. Oh, incredible. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, that that was insane. So I went from, I went from like twenty thousand followers on Instagram to a million in wow. maybe a month. Wow. Right, um, that's trickled down since because I'm not <laughs> sure. on social no, media. Like, exactly I, me, yeah, I just, yeah. I just yeah. let it happen. I lose like a thousand followers yeah. probably a week. Gotta get those videos out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, <laughs> make it take time my, less, man. <laughs> Sammy's <laughs> looking at me right now. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to. We'll do a little bang. Sammy's yeah. like, yeah, we're gonna do a TikTok <laughs> with Penn. <laughs> um, so, uh, wait, what was I saying? You're talking about the transition. You're kind of an oddball. Didn't run oh, to yeah. it. Oh yeah, so I didn't. So you just so got the Emmy. When that when that all had happened, I started getting hit up by obviously a lot of old friends, a lot of old flings, a lot of just random. I didn't know I gave my number out to so many people. <laughs> what am I, I mean, doing? like, hey, I I was your substitute teacher. In wow. this eighth grade, I'm like, what? Some of those might be spam. I get those. <laughs> Why did I get my substitute teacher my number in eighth yeah. grade? That's crazy. <laughs> so it could be spam. I don't know what it was, but pe but I'm talking like I'd wake up with 900 messages. Wow. Oh my god! Like actually 900. Oh, drill. Not even being dramatic. It on was your the, phone, not on that social media. On my phone, on the number. green thing. Yes, <laughs> wow. I did. I'm yeah. talking. It was so much, and it was so yeah. overwhelming, and that's probably did something to a part of my brain. Yeah, yeah. and then. Um, on top of that, celebrities were reaching out too. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I was being hit up. I won't say names, but I was being hit up by like some really dope, dope people that I would love to kick it with. But at the time, I got scared. Yeah. yeah. I got nervous as hell. I was 21. I was still living like pretty much in New York and still going to my mom's regularly and seeing my friends. So even though around me, everybody's like, yo, what's up? How was like Denzel's house last night? Mm -hmm. Like you must have went, right? Like, no, no, I... 
haven't gone to any of these crazy places. He's texting me and I'm not responding. Yeah, no, I'm he actually, him on red. also, that was a random name drop. He's never texting me. No, I'm like, hey, I would love that, but no. Um, but yeah, just like cool people who, t- who t- you know, after the next few shows come out, hopefully they hit me again yeah. Yeah. because I feel like I burned some bridges. I'm not going to lie. I mm. feel like I, maybe not a serious bridge, obviously. Yeah. I don't know how mad you can get at me. You don't know me, but, yeah. uh, you know, I... T- there's there's connections I could have made then. Yeah, man. Well, this industry requires networking. It does. This it does. Is, this is something exactly. We about. So like that's where I'm at it, right it now. It doesn't. It it what what's happened to you is like the most incredible fire starter that anybody could ever ask for. Mm-hmm. And then beyond that, it takes it takes amount of conscious. It it does not just take talent. We know that. You know. Yeah, and it doesn't. doesn't. And, and 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 a lot of it is luck. But then a lot of it is like you know. The worst. The, the worst case is, like, it's nepotism or it's, mm-hmm. like, you know, insular. It's it's an exclusive crowd. But actually, it's natural to want to work with people you know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, agreed. it's natural to want to work with somebody that you're like, I, I trust that person. Yeah. I don't yeah. know that person. person. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. again, the worst case is, like, it's exclusivity. It's 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 just all the bad things that we know about. But, yeah. you know, I'm just... I wish I knew this then. Like, <laughs> right. I, I wish I actually thought these, these ways. I was so anti-it. 